can't deny that democracy is probably the most ideal form of government man has come up with so far. I mean, through giving citizens the ability to decide their own fate, and having the majority represented by those in power, in theory, you really can't go wrong. But that's the problem. Human nature does not abide by theory. Throughout the years, humans all over the world have found so many ways to exploit democracy to suit their own interests. And frankly, I can't say I'm surprised. Benevolent dictatorships, on the other hand, are a lot more in line with how humans work. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you lost me as soon as you used the words benevolent and dictatorship in the same sentence. Dictators are never beneficial to their people. <laughs> And that's where you're wrong. Unfortunately, modern day media has ingrained this idea of dictatorship equals bad in all of our minds. Even though there are so many examples of dictatorships being the best thing to happen to a country. Take Thomas Sankara as an example. I'm sorry, who? That's exactly my point. Anyways, Sankara was the president of Burkina Faso and was considered to be the greatest dictator of all time. He genuinely had his country's and his people's best interests in mind. And because he was a dictator, he made sure that things happened the way he wanted them to. Unlike most democratic leaders, he didn't have to go through numerous voting processes just to make a small decision that could someday lead to an action. He knew what was best for the country and he made it happen. The successes he achieved far outweighed any progress made by any other democratic leader at that time, purely because he was a benevolent dictator. And he's not the only case. We also have examples like Lee Kuan Yew or Joseph Broz Tito. Okay, sure, maybe there were some examples of dictators making a positive overall impact on their country. But I can assure you those benefits were always short-lived. Because benevolent dictators can't live forever, right? So what happens when they die? I mean, while our benevolent dictator was in power, they probably weakened, if not eliminated, any possibility of democracy or any opposition that may have challenged their authority. This means that when our benevolent dictator dies, another dictator, who we can't be sure will be as compassionate as the last, will be handed the nation on a golden plate. This is what gives rise to the immoral and corrupt dictators that every country wants to avoid. You're saying that as if democracies can't give rise to corrupt dictators as well. Well, yeah, of course. Because if the people don't approve of a candidate, then they just need to put up with them until the end of their term. And then they can elect someone else. But what if they can't? What do you mean? What if a democratically elected leader infiltrates the system and uses democracy to give themselves unchallengeable power? What? That's impossible. <laughs> You'd be surprised. In all regions of the world, there have been numerous instances of weak democracies being used to create dictatorships. Take Egypt, for instance. Their current president took advantage of anti-governmental protests, orchestrated a military coup on Egypt's first democratically elected president, and then justified overthrowing said president by claiming he was simply responding to the Egyptian people's democratic wishes. But of course, it didn't stop there. After he gained power, he infiltrated the entire governmental system, but democratically. He held votes that always came out in his favor. He passed countless legislations that apparently had the people's overwhelming approval, and then claimed to the West that everything he did was in line with democracy, even though the media and his own people clearly thought otherwise. <laughs> Egypt's weak and unprotected democracy gave birth to one of the worst dictatorships of our modern day. And this can happen in relatively strong democracies. Take the United States as an example. Put simply, democracy is defenseless in the face of human nature. Unless properly looked after and guarded, all democracies in the world will slowly fade into corrupt dictatorships. Come on, you can't make that assumption based on a few examples. Why don't we put the conspiracies aside and focus on the facts? 
History has repeatedly proven that oppressing a population will ultimately catalyze an explosion. Even if your benevolent dictator is doing good for the country, citizens will still feel limited. They'll feel as though they don't have freedom. And that is a very dangerous feeling to have. Well, in my opinion, giving people too much freedom is just as bad as giving none at all. For example, let's rewind back to the start of this pandemic, when we were told to wear face masks in order to protect ourselves and the community. The only populations that had the audacity to protest wearing something that could potentially save thousands of lives were the ones in the no, democratic nation. Shame on you for voting for a mask. Countries I... that have a firm dictatorship, like China, were able to keep things under control purely because they had total control. Okay, but after this pandemic subsides, guess which population will have to go back to living in constant fear and oppression? And guess which population will go back to living under a government that understands and represents them? Come on. We both know that's not true. Have you not noticed how democratic elections have basically turned into a competition of wealth? Most of the time, the people who actually understand the views and the struggle of the majority don't have the financial means to run for high-ranking positions. So you're left with the same circle of detached politicians that rarely reflect the people. I'd much rather just have a firm leader whose primary goal is the success of their nation. Freedom can come next. I completely disagree. Maybe you'll live a happy life under a benevolent dictator, but we all know it's temporary bliss. When you live in even the weakest of democracies, there will always be potential for change. As long as people have a choice, as long as they have freedom, corruption and oppression will never reign superior.